Sing it one more time with desperation from your spirit. Fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Fire upon my Can you just lift your hands everywhere? Just the strings. Holy fire, holy fire, burn. Sing it one more time, holy fire, holy fire, holy fire, holy fire. Just lift your hands and be still. When you are here, 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 when you are there, when you are here, when you are here. When you, when you are there, 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 you are here. The Lord in the midst of his people is mighty. The Lord in the midst of his people is mighty. When you are here, 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 when you are there, when you are there, when you are there, when you are there. When you are there, when you are there, <laughs> when you are there, when you are there, there is lifting, speed, healing, when you are here, transformation, power, and grace. When you are here, there is deliverance, miracles. When you are here, when you are here, I see signs and wonders. When you are there, Lord, you are here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to begin tonight by praying. I want us to pray for like the next 10 minutes. There's something heavy that will drop in this place. And I seriously need our cooperation. We are going to pray in the next 10 minutes. And then I'll just share the word briefly. Just help them please. In the next 5 minutes, can you just lift your voice and pray in other tongues if you can. And build your faith. The atmosphere is stirred up already. There's a shift. Lift your voice and just pray in the spirit. Edify yourself. Edify yourself. Building up your most holy faith by praying in the spirit. 
rain in the Holy Ghost. Let it rise from your within. Let it rise out of your belly. Come on, pray, come on, pray. Let faith be built in your spirit for what God is said to do tonight. Come on, pray. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, raise your voice, raise your voice. Come on, raise your voice, raise your voice. Come on, raise your voice. Shadila Brahana Zabrahazo Dobron de Siva Embrehele Kedida Sobro Honde Legeva Shegon Brahada Liga Hombre Sida Ela Cabra Dos Ibraha Badura Sidia Bahana Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last prayer. Lord, let something come on my life before the end of this conference. Raise your voice and pray. Place a demand. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted by people falling around you. I want you to focus on God. Let something come on me. Let something fall. Let something fall. Let there be an awakening in my spirit. Let light come on my mind, my understanding. Let grace be supplied. Are you praying? Are you praying? Do we have praying people here? As you pray, your prayer is drawing power from heaven. As you, as you pray, your prayer is an incense of expectation rising to the heavens.
Blessed be your name. In Jesus. Name. In Jesus' name. Father, I'm praying that you visit us tonight. I pray that you will move mightily in this place as you are already doing. I declare that under this atmosphere, let there be signs and wonders. Let your word come forth with power. Minister to the needs of your people. Let your fire fall and burn in this house. Raise mighty men and women. By reason of this conference, let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated quietly. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to appreciate every one of us for coming and um, also apologize for the heat amen um, nonetheless we'll be done in a good time today and i trust god to have his way so once again i apologize for the heat and um, the little discomfort uh, but i want your hearts to be open tonight if you can hear me say amen can we celebrate god for Pastor Emma and his wife, the resident pastor of this church. Thank you very much, sir and ma. Thank you. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you, sir and ma, Pastor Emma and his wife are the resident pastors of this church. And I just wanted to honor them before we go in. And every one of us is welcome. Friends from far and near. Some travel to be here. God bless you in Jesus' name. Are we set tonight? There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. We lift the voice to pray. It is you that we see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. Man may not understand how far you've brought us. 
I don't know if you know this song. I'm the one that you have shown me. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one that lift your voice and sing. I'm the one that you have shown me. Say you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Can we sing it for just a minute? I'm the one say you have shown me mess. You have shown. You have shown me mercy. Lift your voice and say, "I'm the one." You have shown. You have shown me mercy. You have shown. Lord, it is indeed because of your mercy. It is because of your mercy that has brought us thus far. All of your goodness that we have enjoyed, all of your grace and your power is because you have chosen to show us mercy. And so we declare it that your name will be glorified. One more time, I'm the one, say, I'm the one, you have shown me mercy, you have shown me mercy, you have shown me mercy. Lift your voice one more time and say, I'm the one that you have shown mercy. Sing it like you believe it. Show. One more time, lift your voice and say, You have shown, you have shown me, oh yeah. Truly, I'm the one that you have shown me. You have shown me mercy. You have. Can you just be still? Just the strings play. I just want you to be still in this atmosphere. And just enjoy his presence. Keep playing, please. This is how we allow the ministry of the Spirit find expression amongst us. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one, yes, Lord. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Truly we are the ones you have shown mercy. You have shown us mercy. You have shown mercy. A few days ago, I was in the vision of the Lord and I saw this meeting. I saw this third day. And as I was in that vision, I saw people seated like this. And all of a sudden, I saw something drop from heaven. And what it looked like was like a garment of fire. 
there was a garment but it was fire all over and I saw it drop on two people and the Lord asked me to declare right now that that garment of fire is coming on two individuals now and it is a separation for a higher calling a higher purpose and right now in the name of Jesus let the heavens be open let that garment be released is a separation to a higher calling is a separation to a higher calling a higher calling of grace a higher calling of grace thank you father Everybody in the protocol department, please come. I don't have so much time today, so I want us to be very snappy. Everybody in the protocol department, including these two people standing. Let's just minister to a few people and then I'll preach. Just be soft. Yeah. All the protocol members, quickly. Worship team, get prepared. Where's David? David. Come, let me pray for you. Stand here. Ah, you guys are not coming. Okay, we will shun it now. David, I want to pray for you. And this prayer will shift you to another level in life, in your work with God and in ministry. Amen. You have been laboring in the secret place, but there are certain things that your labor cannot bring in this kingdom. There are things that you need to be called up into new dimensions. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for David. I pray that from today, your spiritual experiences with God will be lubricated. I open you to encounters in the spirit. And the Lord said I should pray this for you. That in the name of Jesus, God is giving you a depth of revelation. And it will affect your life of worship. Help him. A depth of revelation. What you need is depth. Revelation is not just knowing scripture. It's a, it's a realm in the spirit. Depth of revelation. From today, angels will begin to teach you scriptures and dreams. From today, you'll begin to receive songs. I'm not saying compose. You'll begin to receive songs and sounds. And there is a song that the Lord will give you that will announce you in this nation. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. All of you, join hands, lift it up. I just want to pray and release grace upon you guys. Is that okay? Is that okay? Grace will be released. Shift that camera. Mm -hmm. Grace will be released. Now, one of you has a strange prophetic anointing, and I'm going to ask the Lord to pick that person now before I pray for you guys. And in the name of Jesus, I stretch my right hand lord whoever that person is i stir up that prophetic fire right now let it be activated to another level in the name of jesus you will hear a shout now to another level in the name of jesus step into the wells of the prophetic as him now the rest of you hold your hands father in the name of jesus i pray that grace be released upon these ones right now from the left to the right i literally see it like fire on your leg and in the name of jesus at the count of three i release supernatural grace let it affect every area of your life 
you will never be the same today and the lord shift you to a higher dimension in your work with him in the name of jesus at the count of three one two three take it help them worship him stand hold your hands quickly No, you guys just remain here. I'll pray for you people after now, not now. You guys play. Let me pray for them. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, sweet spirit, we pray. I'm seeing something that looks like a cloud, but it's made of fire and is moving on your heads. Come, in your strength and your power. Come, in your own spell, shall we? Worship team, lift your hands, everybody. Hold your hands and lift it up. And I pray in the name of Jesus, let a grace be released that superimpose on your labors in the spirit well enough to shift you to a higher dimension. I decree that from today, giftings are stirred up inside every one of you and I decree that from today, each one of you will step into the realm of prophetic worship. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Lord, release that grace like fire upon them. Like fire upon them. Like fire upon them. Like fire upon them. Take it. Take that grace. Prophetic worship. Prophetic worship. Prophetic worship. Prophetic worship. You will not just sing, you will simulate what is sing what is sung in the heavens. He say, and they sang the song of Moses. You will not just sing, you will sing what is sung in the heavens. They are new every morning, you every morning. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Great is thy faithfulness. Just sit down. There's a reason I'm walking around. Oh, great is thy soft the steadfastness of the Lord never I just want to activate gifts in some people his mercies never restoration that's what God is giving you restore they are new every morning, truly new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. There's such a strong angelic presence in this hall. There's such a strong angelic presence. And there are five people here right now. The Spirit of God will open your eyes. And you will literally begin to see the activity of these angels. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I count to five, open the eyes of those five people. In the name of Jesus. 
five of them one two three four is an anointing for sight it will come upon you they will literally begin to see the angels in this place you every morning Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Look at that. I'm not even touching her. Great is thy Can I pray for you? Are you ready for another level? There are things in you that you have no idea of. Sit down. Okay, just stand. There are things in you that you have no idea of. And even the people around you don't know. But tonight it will be stirred up. Please, softly, softly softly very soft tonight it will be stirred up and men will know what a vessel you are in the hands of God Judges Judges Just don't be distracted Allow the Spirit of God to do what He's doing Judges Chapter 15 Great is thy faith Fullness Occupy my life All egos Give me no rest Till I find rest in you Occupy my life Holy Ghost Give me no rest Till I find rest in you Occupy my heart Holy Ghost Give me no rest Till I find rest in you Shataka Borakaya Occupy my life, Holy Ghost. Give me no rest till I find rest in you. <laughs> till I find rest in you. Oh, till I find rest in you. Till I find rest in you. Oh. Till I find rest in you Till I find rest in you Oh Lord Till I find rest in you Till I find rest in you Judges 15 Judges 15 All of you here just lift your hands I see something like fire just from here going there there will be two people that will come under an intense anointing please bring them for me you will know by their shout I just saw two people this place two just two you will know by their shout bring them for me father grace 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 Grace. Bring them for me. Judges 15. Judges 15. Yeah, 
God. Can I preach today? There's a lady here. The hand of God will come on you. That's what I'm seeing. A lady. Right here. Just close your eyes, everybody. It will come. And you will hear, she will shout. Bring her. That's the two of them. Till I find rest in you. Hey. Mm -hmm. Till I find rest in you. Some of you don't know what you are receiving this night. Some of you, what you are receiving will compress the years of labor spiritually. It's okay. Just... Judges 15. Lord, help me. Verse 4 and 5. You know what the Lord is telling me about these two people? There is a grace and a fire of revival on them. The fire of a revivalist. I don't know them. But that's what God is activating. And as I said that, there are five other people that that fire will look for while I'm teaching. And God is raising you as a revivalist. Is a fire of revival for your generation. Lord, find the other five of them in the name of Jesus. All across this place. Judges 15. I didn't say you find them. I said I was talking to God to find them. So you forget about them and just focus. Till I find rest in you. I'm a Kabbalah Babo Siaba. Till I find rest in you. Till I find rest in you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Judges chapter 15, from verse 4. Then Samson went and caught 300 foxes, and he took torches, turned the foxes tail to tail, and put a torch between. I'm still reading. Go back to the previous verse, please. And put a torch between each pair of tails verse 5 when he had set the torches on fire he left the foxes he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain as well as the vineyards and olive groves today God will set somebody on fire and that fire will make you burn in your generation. I told us that I'll teach a little on warfare today, right? And then we'll pray. So, right, the topic is prepare for war. Let me see how I can conserve the time. And I trust God to help us. The Bible is not silent about The Bible is not silent about the fact or rather I would say the truth. Please no movement. Just make sure you minimize movement. The Bible is not silent about this truth that there are or there is a contention between two kingdoms between two forces in this world that we live in there is the kingdom of god there is the kingdom of darkness which is ruled and governed by satan and even as believers the bible is not silent about the activity 
and the quest for supremacy in each of these kingdoms you will realize that this earth was created as a realm to manifest the things that exist in the realm of the spirits so everything you find on this earth human beings animals and things are all acting out realities that exist in the realm of the spirit and there is a battle for supremacy between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the enemy to colonize and to dominate this realm for God he wants his nature and his essence to be revealed on earth he wants creation to come to know him and identify him as God and for the kingdom of darkness they are also on a campaign to ensure that the purposes of God on earth are frustrated and to ensure that man can look to Satan as another option to God who is supposed to be sovereign and supreme so the Bible is not silent of the fact that we are in the midst of a war and the day you give your life to Christ or rather will I say the day you receive the life of Christ you come into the kingdom and you become a potential enemy to the kingdom of darkness it therefore means that there is a system in darkness that will go as far as trying to study your life study your history study God's ordained purpose for you to the intent that they can manipulate your life in such a way that that purpose of God doesn't find expression whether you are aware of it or not so if you are a believer you are already in the midst of a war and this is not something that we have a choice about we can only choose whose side that man there just stretch your hands sir yes just stretch your hands open it towards me you there behind there's something I see come upon you right now there's an unusual grace that will come upon you and God is separating you for something very mighty very mighty in your generation and I release that grace upon you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus so whether you are aware of it or not you don't have a choice as to I don't want to be part of this war I don't want to be part of this battle no 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 the only choice you have is whose side am I going to stand for and that's what we see all through scripture the battle for supremacy and so the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood if the Bible says we wrestle it means that we are we are we are looked at as soldiers we are looked at as mercenaries we are looked at as potential weapons of war in God's arsenal so the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness so this system that we are against has its ranking and has its mode of operation there are demons there are spirits there are demons there are fallen angels and while God has given us the authority to cast out demons God has not given us the authority to cast out principalities and for a while the body of Christ has known how to engage demons but we don't know that we face even a, a hierarchy of spiritual entities that are bent towards frustrating the purposes of God however there is a prophecy I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and so friends if you are here under the sound of my voice you are here because God's intent for you is to conscript you to his army to his end time army and use you as a battle strategy use your life as a weapon of war to of to bring offense against the gates of hell 
to bring down the purposes of darkness and to ensure that the kingdom of God advances if you are here under the sound of my voice this is the singular reason for why God is interested in your life and I know that God is going to raise even greater soldiers in this meeting in the name of the Lord Jesus so God wants to enlist us in his army and empower us against the forces of darkness now there is a there is a model a pattern a blueprint of this army in scripture it is not an army of weaklings the bible says in isaiah that of the army of hezekiah the king there shall be no straggler in other words there shall be no weaklings this army has a blueprint this army has a model and the bible shows us in joel chapter 2 what this army looks like i believe from verse 5 the bible begins to give us details about this army the strategy that was what that was used in their training that makes them so strong and so impregnable to attack the bible says in that joel chapter 2 that they will fall yes verse 5 he says with a noise like chariots go go back to verse 3 let's look at it very well let's see what this army is all about so that we can know god's expectation on our life because the last day ministry the last day the last day church must be a church that understands the place of spiritual warfare he say fire divorced before them he's talking about the army Go to verse 2 let's start from verse 2 a day of darkness and gloominess a day of clouds and thick darkness like the morning clouds spread over the mountains a people come great and strong the like of whom has never been in other words this category of special forces has not been released ever from the kingdom of god i call them special forces kingdom special forces he says nor will there ever be any such after them that's why i know it's the last day army especially if you read down this chapter you will know this prophecy was referring to the last day because when peter quoted this chapter on the day of pentecost he said this is that of which in other words this is but a fraction this is but a fragment of the fulfillment of the prophecy of joel the bulk fulfillment of that prophecy was for the end time church so what happened on the day of pentecost was just an offshoot it was just a first fruit it was it was a trial version of what god intended to release the bible says nor will there ever be any of such after them even for many successive generations go on it said a fire devours before them and behind them a flame burns the land is like the garden of eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness in other words as they pass they leave no stone unturned these are the kind of forces that when you send them to a place they make sure everything that should go down goes down the bible says surely nothing shall escape them go on their appearance is like the appearance of horses and like swift steeds so they run in other words speed becomes natural with them go on with a noise like chariots over mountain tops they leap like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble like a strong people set in battle array verse 6 before them the people write in pain all faces are drained of color we are reading go on they run like mighty men they climb the wall like men of war everyone matches information and they do not break ranks in other words they understand the system of spiritual authority they do not push one another everyone matches in his own color though they launch between the weapons this is where this is what i was looking for though they launch between the weapons they are not cut down in other words even in the midst of swords and weapons around them one translation puts it this way that even when they fall on the sword they are not hurt what kind of an immortal army is this 
a strange species of people people that hell will throw all its weapons against and they will remain standing you know the bible says in ephesians 6 he said having done all to do what to stand to stand friends this is a model of the army that god is raising whether you are aware of it or not this is the army that god is raising in the last days and even before now there is an alarm sounding in the spirit only those who are spiritually alert can hear only those who have yielded themselves to god can hear the alarm that is sounding because god is in need of vessels he will conscript in his army there has never been a season or an age of darkness like we are living in now satan is is is, is pushing all his arsenal on the earth i told you yesterday that i believe that there are demons that have not come on earth before they are coming now satan is manipulating the systems of men to ensure that by all means he suppresses all that god will do and whether we like it or not we we must be trained to understand the art of spiritual warfare because in the last day church every believer must know how to do battle there are territories to take for god there are cities to take for god there are generations to be delivered the bible says a people who dwells in darkness has seen a great light he said and those who dwell in the land the shadow land of the shadow of death upon them a light has shone it is time for saviors to arise so let me look at let's look at an example from scripture let's look at one man in scripture and look at deduce from his life examples that we can take for whom a true soldier in the army of the lord will look like let's let's look at the life of gideon judges chapter 6 the bible spoke about the children of israel and how that after they had seen the lord began to send midianites against them and the midianites oppressed them the bible said in that judges chapter 6 that the midianites will come and devour the produce of their land in other words they could not sustain a good economy every time they plant the midianites will come destroy everything and the bible described the midianite army it said they were as vast as locusts locusts that were innumerable the word locust there is symbolic of the strategy of the enemy when locusts invade a place locusts are insects when they invade a place follow me they come in in, in an almost innumerable form they come and they devour the land and there is nothing left again for that land to harvest the bible spoke in joy chapter one he spoke about the invasion of the locust army and when you read in revelation this army of locust is symbolic of demons released on the earth revelations chapter 9 john saw a vision of these demons released and he said that they were giving power to hot men for five moons so the midianites represented a host of demons released on the children of god that's the reason why today the economy of nations falling tells you that it is more than just a technical problem it is a spiritual problem that an entire nation can be in debt year in year out with their gdp and their gmp rising yet they are in debt there is an invasion there is an invasion of demons there is a spiritual system that has invaded our cosmos and unless we begin to handle this as a spiritual problem we will just keep going on through the cycle thinking that someday solution will come from the government i used to think that the nda was the most protected or should be the most protected place in nigeria and recently we were told that nda was attacked and if a place like that was attacked then that means there's no safe place again even the villa i'm sure And so it was in this time that the bible declares an angel of the lord appeared to gideon and the bible declares that the angel spoke to him and said you are a mighty man of value gideon you know all the story he said if i'm a, if the lord is with us why this and that why this and that and the angel said go in this your might 
now the Bible says when the angel disappeared that Gideon was afraid that he would die because he had seen the face of God and God spoke to him and said you shall not die but then after that encounter the Lord spoke to him in verse 26 I believe and the Lord told him he said this night take some men with you and bring down the altar of Baal do we have that verse 26 I want to show you something Judges 6 okay start from verse 25 let me show you something now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him take your father's young bull the second bull of seven years old and tear down the altar of who tear down the altar of who was it not the angel of the Lord who spoke to Gideon and said go in this your might you would think that after that encounter Gideon was fortified and he was ready to go against the Midianite God came again and said oh boy before you go anywhere tear down the altar of Baal and this is the reason why deliverance is important in the body of Christ that you cannot become used by God to bring down the arsenal of hell except the altars that fight you have been brought down because many of us don't understand the system of Satan Satan understands that this realm the realm of the spirit rather is a, leg is a legal realm it operates by by laws it is a, a realm of justice and so he knows that spiritually you may be born again you may have the seed of God inside of you you have the Holy Spirit and the life of God in you but biologically speaking you are still connected to an ancestry an ancestry that may carry all kinds of things you remember that in the Bible the parable of the sower the Bible says the seed some fell on the roadside some fell among thorns so the produce of the seed was based on where they fell it was not about the seed it was where the seed fell and many of us are here like that seeds but some of us fell into families where there is all kinds of idolatry some of us fell into families that were dedicated to idols dedicated to to, to forces some of us fell into families where witchcraft is prevalent some of us fell into families where the order that is in the ancestry is that men are cut off as soon as they get to 30 years and now you are in the faith you are a new creature in Christ Jesus and you don't understand that there is another law that the enemy can use to suppress or subvert God's purposes through you God told Gideon he said before you go anywhere this night tear down the altars of Baal that's the reason why we cannot see revival in our cities except the altars of Baal are brought down except the powers that be are humbled the Bible says in the days of his power the people shall be willing that's the reason why we can hold programs and yet we don't see the move of God that's the reason why we can hold meetings and yet the power of God we see is so little that's the reason why we can do everything we know how to do we can even go out for evangelizing share tracts and everywhere you come on Sunday you still see an empty empty pews why because there is an altar in that land that must be brought down you must understand that from when man rebelled against God and fell the system entirely was transmitted under the dominion of Satan and so when Jesus came Jesus paid the ultimate price for redemption but it doesn't mean that the whole of creation was redeemed are we together so we become redeemed because we accept his work on Calvary and we become the first fruits of that redemption but in Romans chapter 8 the Bible tells us that creation will be delivered from the bondage of corruption as far as God is concerned the whole earth is still under the clutches of the enemy it's still under the clutches of darkness John first John 5 19 he said the whole world lieth in wickedness another translation says under the sway of the wicked one so though Jesus paid the ultimate price for redemption yet redemption is yet to be manifested in our communities in our territories in our region why 
because literally speaking satan is still the god of this world somebody may say ah, but jesus told the disciple when he was about to ascend that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me it's true authority is from the word auto in other words you are given a delegated power you are given the ability or the power to function in a capacity so what jesus did was that he restored dominion for man to become a legal occupant and a legal principality on the earth again follow me this night what jesus did was that he restored man potentially to that place where man can have a say over the things on this earth but it doesn't mean that the earth has been translated back to the dominion of men no that's the reason why in heaven he is lord but not yet on earth that's why paul prophesied he said that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess will that's future tense isn't it no you are not talking to me as though we don't read our bible okay let's prove it philippians 2 verse 9 let's prove it this is what i'm showing you tonight is the strategy you will use to enter any place any sphere and take down that place for jesus verse 9 he said therefore god also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name all this one happened in heaven peter said it on the day of pentecost he said that this which you see today is a proof that jesus has been enthroned as lord and christ where was he enthroned in heaven not on earth verse 10 that ev that at the name of jesus if it if the name was jesus the bible would have said that at the name jesus so the name is talking about here is not jesus because jesus is a is from the hebrew word yeshua there are there is a footballer there are footballers that bear jesus isn't it if the name was jesus why is it that there are people who shout jesus under attack and the attack continues the bible says that at the name of so the name is not jesus that at the name of jesus that name is not just nomenclature it's not just an identity no that name is a position of authority that he occupies the bible says that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth gone and that every tongue should confess that jesus he didn't say that every tongue has confessed he didn't say that every knee has bowed this is what should happen when that name is manifested notice he didn't say at the mention of the name he said at the name in other words that name when it is revealed it contains power in it that is able to subject all things and they will confess that what jesus christ is lord in other words what happened in heaven that enthroned him above all the angels will definitely find expression so this scripture is a future occurrence it is yet to happen it will take men and women that will reveal the authenticity and the power of this name so that the lord what? the bible says in psalms 24 it said lift up your head O ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors that the king of glory i thought it was the king of glory that should make that statement no though he was the king of glory yet he took a human person why because the context of that chapter was on earth from verse one the earth is the lord and the fullness so it was like jesus christ is supposed to come into a territory and reign but it takes a human being who has legal access by reason of flesh and blood to subdue forces and principalities and powers and bring he said lift up your heads you see why if you don't understand warfare and if you don't bring down the powers of darkness in your territory jesus will not be lord though he's lord of all so god has left the ultimate fulfillment of redemption to the participation of you and i 
I'm, 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 I'm consigned. This scripture has not found expression completely. There are places on earth where you can't mention the name of Jesus. You know why? Because there are yet to be people. So God told Gideon in Judges chapter 6, he said, bring down the altar of Baal first. Because what you don't understand is, though I have anointed you to save Israel, but legally speaking, you are earthly. And being earthly, you are connected to a biological ancestry. And so the system of warfare is such that you must deal with the powers that, uh, that hold on to your history, that hold on to your genealogy first, before you can become a deliverer to a generation. That's the reason why this was the cause in the garden. He said, I will put enmity between you and between the, 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 the woman, between your seed and her seed. He said, and your, her seed shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Bruising of the head of the serpent means is what Jesus did on the cross. Isn't it? When he died on the cross, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, that he through death destroyed him who had power over death, which was the devil but the bruising of his heel your leg is connected to the ground your leg speaks of your your stance it speaks of your positioning in other words it speaks of your foundation and i've often wondered why did god give us two legs why not three or four like the animals and one day the holy spirit whispered this to me you may not agree with this but this is my belief that the reason why god gave us two legs even though for a thing to be balanced it must have four legs is that not so yeah but god gave us two legs and we are still balanced why one represents your father's side the other one represents your mother's side that's why the bible says wherever the sole of your feet it didn't say foot and this your, you shall bruise is what heal so until a believer learns to deal with the forces that exist in his phys physiological background you cannot become a weapon that god will use against the enemy and this is the reason why we have a lot of anointed people but it looks like something suppresses the ministry that is inside of them we have a lot of people who are supposed to be healing ministers they carry healing anointings but they are sick on a regular basis. why there is an altar that must be pulled down you now see that ministry is more like a military training that there are things that god will help you deal with first before you can become a deliverer and a savior to your generation give me that verse 25 again or oh, is it 25 or 26 now judges chapter 6 quickly it says take your father's young bull the second bull of seven years old and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has if you want to tear down an altar, is it not to just go and destroy it? God said, no, you must do it with sacrifice. Take a bull, not a cow, not a ram. Take a what? Bull. So your partnership with the Holy Ghost to bring down the forces of darkness and enthrone the reign of the Lord starts from the altar of sacrifice. That yes, God has empowered you and he has done everything. All we need to do is walk in the light of that which Jesus has achieved. Yet, there is a legal system of sacrifice that must, be, that must be enacted. Why? Because if Satan has a, his presence in a place, it was because there were people who raised altars to him. And when I'm talking about altars, I'm not just talking about physical altars alone. No. I'm talking about people who gave Satan access it took sacrifice to invite the host of darkness into that place it will take sacrifice to bring in the purposes of god that's why the bible says that we are priests and kings to rule and reign where on the earth bring down the altar of Baal. let's go on let's finish it and then we'll begin to pray and cut down the wooden image that is beside it go on and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement and take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood 
off the image which you shall cut down verse 27 lastly so Gideon took 10 men 10 represents the law isn't it yeah the 10 commandments the law in other words he was bringing in a new system of governance so Gideon took 10 men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him but because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day he did it by when by night he did it by night you want to be in this army you want to be enlisted in the army of the Lord and see to it that the purposes of God find expression through you let me give you a few things a few criteria to be in this army and then we'll pray number one you must be born again you must be born again just because you come to church and shout Jesus like others or you dress in church clothes like other people doesn't mean you are born again to be born again begins with the process of death the Bible says for ye were dead and your life is hid in Christ with God you know we often would tell people give your life to Christ and I think there's a little error in that statement I don't believe that you can give your life maybe in a place of service you can return your life back to God but you see if being born again means you die first before you leave according to scripture then it means therefore that you are not really giving life to God because when you come to receive his life you die the life you were living with dies there the Bible says for ye we are dead so if you died which life are you giving to God now because that life is characterized by sin characterized by iniquity characterized by rebellion what will he use with that life that's the reason why the new birth experience begins with death you die to yourself and then you become alive again or he becomes alive through you that's why the bible says if any man be in christ he's a new creature there is a change that happens from within you are no longer physically speaking they may call you festus but inside of you there is a change there is a new species something has adulterated or mutated your gene you are now born again for you to be in this army you must be born again first in other words you will carry the DNA of the commander of this army that makes you responsive and alive to the Spirit of God and that makes you to hate sin number two you must be led by the Holy Ghost you want to be in this army that God is raising on the last days you must be led by the Holy Ghost when you become born again you must know the person of the Holy Spirit because he becomes the controller the operator of the system that is inside of you you understand that the life inside of you even you don't understand it so it takes one who is a guide to help you know how to navigate with this life you must be led by the Holy Ghost that was what Jesus personified while he was on earth when the when Jesus when the Holy Ghost came on him at River Jordan the Bible says in Luke chapter 4 that the Spirit drove him I think Mark, Mark chapter 1 rather to the wilderness Luke chapter 4 verse 1 it says and he was led by the Spirit you are no longer led by your physical senses you must be led by the Spirit it is only the Spirit of God that gives you access to the realm of the Spirit and how it operates it is the Spirit of God that helps you to understand the things that are around you it is the Spirit of God that helps you to understand the weapons that are at your disposal it is the Spirit of God that helps you to understand when you are in a battle season it is the Spirit of God that helps you understand the movement of the life of God in you it is the Spirit of God that gives you discernment it is the Spirit of God that activates faith I hope you know as a human being you cannot have the God kind of faith humans have their own kind of faith for instance many of us came into this church sat down the chair not testing the chair whether i can carry you right that's human faith you expect logically speaking that it was built to carry a human being so you sat down that faith is not sufficient 
to be translated into experiencing the realities of the spirit realm so the god kind of faith is born in your spirit by the holy ghost so you cannot have faith outside of the holy ghost operating in you that's the reason why the bible says faith cometh by hearing it's not something that resides in you it comes you receive it the same scripture they have been reading for many years one day the pastor is preaching and all of a sudden boom something comes into inside of your spirit and that one scripture what it released to your spirit makes you a man that can raise the dead you think it's ordinary no it's called the god kind of faith all of a sudden the holy ghost activates that faith in you and when your weakness you become a man that can do the impossible it's not ordinary but you have to be led by the holy ghost I'm, I'm stressing on this because we are living in a generation that think we can do it outside of the holy ghost somebody says, ah, must i be a robot must he must, I, must we spiritualize everything you have not understood I, I don't know the economy you are living in but if you have understood that the economy of this earth system will always fail you will know that you must be spiritual all day even to eat food the bible says it must be received with prayer and thanksgiving and i had the story of a man of god in this city in this country two of them the first one our daddy daddy Joe. one day he sat down on his dining table to eat with his wife and then he decided to pray for the food in jesus name father we thank you father we thank you and he was on we thank you for almost five minutes the wife stood up and went to the cook and called the cook true story say come here what did you put inside this food and it was discovered that the food was poisoned it happened many years ago or is it about the story i heard someone told me from him that he was to eat breakfast one day with his wife tea and bread and there was tea in the jug the jug would fill three cups so he had a cup his wife had a cup and so his cup was full his wife's cup was full remaining just enough to fill one more cup so while in prayer he invited the holy ghost to join them in the breakfast like we would do casually we think all those prayer you know you just pray and eat according to the story he drank his tea when he finished the tea in his cup he decided to refill his cup again he took the jug and the jug was empty and instantly the holy spirit whispered to him i thought you asked me to join you somebody say don't spiritualize anything you don't understand what it means to be led by the spirit it means accuracy and precision with the plan of god part time look at elisha every time the king of syria will attack israel elisha will tell the king don't go to so so place and the attack will be foiled over and over again the king of syria called the servant and said come tell us who is the traitor here they say no sir none of us are traitors to you but there is a prophet called elisha he hears the things that you say in your bedroom you think it's not possible it is that in these last days that god can god will raise people who are so activated spiritually you literally will pass people and you can hear what they are thinking in their mind so you enter a place they gossip you finish then you greet them god bless you and walk away how did you think peter knew that ananas and sapphira lied the bible says they discussed within themselves to keep part of the money when they came to peter he was hearing the discussion in their heart it's a realm oh, you can get there when you are led by the holy ghost you must be led by the holy spirit number three you must understand the place of spiritual authority you must understand and submit to the place of spiritual authority that in this army there are ranks there are cadres. we are all equal in christ but we are not equal with christ mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. our partnership our dealings with the holy spirit and our sacrifices separate us number one number two the election of god's grace on certain individual separates them to be above others so that brethren mentality is good for unity 
but it is not healthy in understanding spiritual authority we are all not the same let me tell you we are all not the same that's why two people can sleep on the same bed one person is having a nightmare the other person is having a sound sleep did the spirit not see the other one to press we are all not the same second corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3 he said for though we walk, we walk in the flesh yet we do not war in the flesh so you see that the context of second corinthians 10 is the context of warfare then in verse 4 it says that we, 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 we our, 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 the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and bringing under subjection everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ verse 6 has something very interesting he says i'm being ready to punish all disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled so the reason why the demons will be subject to you is because you have fulfilled your your own part of understanding and submitting to appropriate spiritual authority that in the army of god there are ranks there are there are other ranks there are officers there are captains there are commanders there are generals all placed by god working with different graces and that's the problem with young people that's the reason why we suffer too much we don't understand spiritual authority your pastor became your mate because he ate rice in your house once twice so that's the reason why i don't like coming out i don't want the people to become familiar with me so that i will not stop being a blessing to them the bible says that there are celestial but there are terrestrial bodies and there are celestial bodies there are men who have an investment inside of them that is capable of protecting the nation what did the king cry when he went to elisha he said my father my father you are the strength of israel king james said the chariots and horses of israel another the same thing was spoken about elijah he said the chariots and the horses of israel thereof in other words elijah and elisha were working in a capacity whereby they singularly were a defense to the entire nation of israel though there were seven other thousand prophets but yet the investment upon one man made him the defense of an entire nation spiritual authority spiritual authority it was because jesus was yielded to the holy ghost after the temptation when he came out the bible says demons began to cry out they say we know you you are the holy one of god the reason why we are shouting when we see you and your presence torments us is because you are wholesomely submitted now spiritual authority begins first from understanding god's sovereign place over our lives and coming into total conformity to his will first before submitting to the graces he has put around that means that you cannot live in rebellion or you cannot live outside of the holy ghost and still expect god to back you no 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 you must come under the influence and the government of god those that are led by the spirit he said these ones are the sons of god casually let me say this to us some of us the reason why you go on a particular fast and you come down with sickness let's check that fasting was it god who asked you to fast or you decided to do it to boost your spiritual cv You think about it the centurion told jesus he says for i am a man under authority i say to one come he comes and to another go he goes he said therefore you speak the word just the way i am under the roman government authority the same way the soldiers under me are submitted to me i am a centurion a commander of hundred and the reason is because i am submissive to another one who is a commander of thousands that means that in the kingdom there are captains of hundreds there are captains of fifties there are captains of one thousand even the grace for influence that comes upon individuals in the generation defy it is based on the authority we command spiritually not everybody is called to have crowd no spiritual authority is a system that regulates it 
there are men that can come into a city and two days before they come all the demons in that location go on vacation for one month one month leave they come and you see them just move effortlessly as though god is owing them his power and as soon as they leave that city some people will go and hold crusade and demons will beat them I was watching this afternoon the videos of Archbishop Benson Idaosa of blessed memory. May God raise people like Archbishop Benson Idaosa again. I was watching his videos this afternoon before coming. I nearly wept. He said he went to do crusade one time in Lagos. And then there was a crowd of people. And they said that the crowd, because they were too much, they killed the grasses in the stadium. And the next day, Nigeria was to play Cameroon. So government came, packed his equipment, kept his outside. No crusade for you because Nigeria must play match. When he went there, the, Bible, the, the story had it from his mouth. He said he declared that because they took his equipment outside and he will not hold crusade, Nigeria will lose that match. And in fact, the match will not hold because thunder and lightning will come from heaven. And according to the story, they said for three hours they were just calling and apologizing it also we are sorry it also we are sorry i heard it from his mouth in the video because rain and thunder fell then when he was finally at peace he went back and announced that the rain will not fall they said okay come and bless the players he came and blessed the players and he prophesied that nigeria will win 2-0 and nigeria won that match 2-0 not because the players played well but because a man spoke I heard of the story of how that he went to Australia. I don't know, you can verify. Was it Australia or one of this country? They refused to give him a place for crusade. You know, Idausa was a very, very funny man. He was never invited to all the countries he went to. He would just enter a country with his team and hold crusade. They refused to give him a place for crusade. Idausa walked to a street. He said, okay, do you have a street where they have blind people, lame people? They took him to a street. And the story had it that he healed all of them so much so that that street was called after his name and that day became a public holiday in that nation it's called idaosa day one man or is it the story about how somebody fell from a story building in their service and a couple they had this afternoon i even watched a video of a dead person he, uh, he that he woke up he was preaching calmly with his abada the woman died he said bring the woman they laid her on the altar she was stone dead live i watched it on video and he just laid his hands there like you are praying for headache father thank you i rebuke the spirit of death in the name of jesus poured water on the woman she stood up i say as though he was praying for headache you know the secret behind that spiritual authority that in this kingdom god will begin to give you access to understand how the system of his kingdom operates understand how to partner with angels and a time come when you walk around people just see you naturally but they don't know that the host of angels following you but your life must be in conformity to god first and you must be a man under authority there are anointings that God will not release to you on your own. He will release it through a vessel of his because he will check your alignment first. Joshua was anointed, but Moses had to lay hands on him to be filled with the spirit of wisdom. And notice that God never spoke to Joshua until Moses died. Joshua chapter 1. After these things, when Moses had died, the Bible says the Lord appeared to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. All the while Joshua was in the tabernacle, he was there in the presence of God. God didn't speak to him. Authority. That's the reason why if we don't submit loyally to spiritual authority, our generation may lose certain buttons that this nation has been carrying for years we are living in a generation now where all kinds of young people want to be popular on social media and they castigate men of god they speak against people anyhow if you are here and you join that i want you to be delivered this night be careful the bible says who are you to judge another man's servant whether he standard or fall it is up to god God, the ways of God are so strange that a man can be in error. God is still using him. You talk against that man, God will shut you up. 
why because it took sacrifice to get to that place number four you must understand and exercise priesthood you must understand and exercise priesthood let me end here i had one more to pray to to list but because of time let me end here you must understand and exercise priesthood you want to be in the army of god you want god to use you mightily in this generation in any sphere that he has placed you god is not only raising pulpit ministers god is raising ministers in the marketplace there are demons in the military huh there are principalities in government you wait till it's time for an election that's when you hear all kinds of people dying almost all the systems of this world now are controlled by principalities rulers of darkness powers that be you want to be in the army of god and wield influence in those places bring down the gate of hell you must exercise priesthood what is priesthood in plain terms priesthood is the system by which the realm of the spirit is legalized to manifest on earth case closed that's it the realm of the spirit cannot manifest on this earth except it is licensed it takes one who has a human body to invite the spirit that's why demons are disembodied spirits the moment you cast them out of one man they must look for another man to be in priesthood that means every believer must have must understand the system by which god is invited and invoked on the earth and prayer becomes the primary posture of priesthood it starts by prayer it's passed by the time you spend with the lord let me tell you something about consistency anything that you begin to do consistently you will attract the spiritual agency that fraternizes with that activity for instance if you commit immorality you sleep with somebody that is not your spouse if you do that continually a time will come where the spirit that fraternizes with that activity will possess your life and then it becomes difficult to live a day without seeing a man or a woman if you steal once that may just be an act but if you continually steal the spirit of the devil remember his first mission is to steal then kill and destroy so there is a dimension of satan that will look for that one who is consistent in stealing and then he becomes they call it kleptomaniac there's nothing like that that one is just dictionary name there is a spirit sponsoring his theft that's the reason why without anybody seeing him he can pass a place and something will miss have you seen those kind of thieves nobody saw them they just passed a phone was missing there's a spirit now sponsoring them so also when you begin to pray you may start today nothing happens tomorrow nothing happens one month nothing happens two months sometimes three months nothing happens god is watching your consistency because what you are doing is you are creating a gateway you are creating a bridge for the spirit that sponsors the energy to pray to, to fraternize with you a time will come where prayer becomes normal with you you sleep by 11 p.m wake up 12 30 a.m and you can pray the next six hours all through this week i don't think i've had up to three hours of sleep any of the day all true and with that tiredness you will think that i should just go on mm -mm. once that time comes there is something that wakes you up so priesthood becomes one of the ways by which will legalize God to find expression and everyone that will be in this army must understand priesthood that as you begin to pray you are partnering with the Holy Spirit and all of a sudden your prayer will create an atmosphere and before long God finds expression in that city that's the reason why the move of God is prayer the move of God is not power and all the move of God is when men begin to pray if you begin to pray those altars in your family will be brought down if you begin to pray you will begin to disturb territorial spirits do you know that there is a level of prayer you need to rise to before you can know certain spirits operating in a place are we ready tonight
we are going to pray maybe two prayer points and then i'll just minister to us we are out of time but one of the things that i trust god to do as we pray listen carefully many of us represent families where all kinds of altars have been raised many of us represent families where all kinds of patterns demonic patterns find expression many of us come from families where everybody is anointed yet limited many of us come from families where marriages don't last long together we come from regions and territories where all kinds of things hold sway i told you my story that my great grandfather was a wizard in his time and his own wizardry was so potent that he could arrest other wizards if, if a native doctor is disturbing you you just call on him he knows how to arrest them then in the morning they'll bring millets and granots and to come and bribe him that informs me that there is a prophetic and apostolic grace in the lineage but it was corrupted by him now what he did invited demons into the lineage and when spirits come they come to fraternize with human beings they will come based on the level of lordship that you give to them they will come based on the level of sacrifice you put down they will come and they will operate with you based on the level of submission so when a man invites demons into a family line those demons are coming on the condition that your generations unborn must be subject and loyal to me and then two generations later you just come and you are a man in christ you received an anointing and you think you can just do exploits no way those demons were there before you came that's the reason why you get a job and before one year they sack you you get another job before one year they sack you you travel from Meduguri, you move to abuja thinking it will change if the pattern continues let me tell you something spiritual systems don't obey our natural laws you get a visa travel abroad to america three months later you are you, you, you they, they look for you bundle you on the plane and send you back why there are altars of bill that must be brought down it has really nothing to do with your being anointed it has everything to do with your understanding the ways of the spirit and partnering with god to bring change there are some of us here that there are forces that must be brought down in our family that's why god brought you to this conference so that you will carry an anointing that anointing will make you begin to pray until all the altars that were raised by your forefathers collapse and then the generations in your family are delivered stand on your feet we are going to pray now God told Gideon listen God told Gideon he said bring down the altar of Baal and raise a new altar for me tonight we are going to bring down the altars of hell in our families in our regions some of you in the spheres that you belong to some of you in the place the location of your career there are altars speaking there are organizations where people die every year there are organizations where one person must die in every six months and you are there you don't know that the people you are mourning together with you call colleagues they are the ones killing the people there are families where no child male will survive and you want to step out for the purposes of god you must bring down those altars first then we will raise an altar for god and see how god can come into your family coming through your life and effortlessly cause his power to reign i want you wherever you are to lift up your voice and tell the lord lord i'm available to become an access point for you in my family i am available to become an access point for you in my generation in my territory in my location where i stay where i live in my office in my city in the midst of wickedness in the midst of darkness i am ready to become an access point my life is available open your mouth and pray surrender to him
and ask him to come through ask him to come in through you ask him to quicken you ask him to empower you afresh ask him to use you as an access come on if you are serious about God and his kingdom advancing and his purpose in your life being fulfilled can you cry to him and say Lord I'm available an access point an access point There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Lord, I may be weak, but I avail myself. Lord, I may be looked at as a failure, but I avail myself. Lord, I may come from a family where they look down on females, but I avail myself. I may be poor, but I avail myself. If you are looking for an access point, find my knife. Find my knife. Hallelujah. I wish we had time to pray. I don't have time again. I want to leave. I want us to leave here in the next 10 minutes. I just want you to cooperate. The last prayer point we are going to pray. Listen to me. Whatever wrong has happened in your family, an altar was responsible. Whether you believe in these things or not, this is not a denominational doctrine. This is real. I shared my story on Friday, how that God showed me the principality over this land. And we had to deal with it three years ago. So if today God is doing anything through my life, it's because there are people who have been arrested. Except you confront those altars, the patterns will continue. As a matter of fact, they are waiting for when you will want to step out into ministry. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen, let me explain something to us. Listen, listen carefully, listen. Though Moses was anointed by God, the Bible says there was no prophet like Moses. Listen carefully. But let me show you how the altars in his family fought him. Moses came from the tribe of Levi. Genesis 49, Jacob cursed Levi and Simeon. He said, cursed be their anger. He said, let it be divided and scattered in Israel. Exodus chapter 2, a man from the house of Levi got married to a woman who was a daughter of Aaron. And she bore a son, sorry, a, a daughter of Levi. And the son was Moses. What is the name Moses born out of water? Because of Moses' connection to the tribe of Levi, his destiny at some point was hindered. Why? What he did that made God to stop him from entering the promised land was an act of anger. Remember, God told, uh, Jacob told Levi, he said, cost be their anger. Joshua was from the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim was the second son of Joseph. They were not even among the twelve, but Jacob brought them to be among the twelve by blessing them. In fact, he made Ephraim the older one. And that was the reason why Joshua succeeded. It was not really because Joshua was more anointed than Moses. But until the altars are dealt with, I'm telling you. Until the altars are dealt with. Are we ready to pray? Some of you have families where delay is the order of the day. People can be rich, but they will not marry early. Some of you have families where all kinds of patterns exist. 
some of you are here you are anointed by now you are supposed to be manifesting in ministry but every time you step out there is a, there is a, a sabotage from hell could it be that there are altars if you don't do anything in this conference i want you to challenge those altars by the grace available tonight in the next two minutes i want you to raise your voice and address every power of hell that may be existing in your family or in your bloodline some of you from the region where you come from some of you from the territory where you come from in the next two minutes like Gideon lift your voice tear down the altars of darkness altars that bring delay altars that bring untimely death altars of affliction altars of witchcraft and idolatry come on open your mouth and tear down those altars Open your mouth and in the name of Jesus, command those altars to be turned down, command those spirits to be displaced. Let the strong man be bound, let the strong man be bound. It is time for men to arise. It is time for an army to arise. It is time for the sons and daughters of God to awaken to destiny. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let the altars be brought down. Let the altars be brought down. Let the altars be brought down. Whatever was planted, whatever was buried in the ground, let it be exhumed. Let the chains of darkness be destroyed. Over this city, over the city of Meduguri, let the altars of God be destroyed. Let the altars of idolatry be destroyed. Let the altars of witchcraft be destroyed. Let the altars of sorcery be destroyed. Let the altars of the bond women be destroyed. Let the strong man over the city be brought down. Spirits that fight the destinies of men, spirits that fight the ministries of men, spirit that fight the manifestation of God's purposes over lives, over individuals. Let them be brought down. Let them be brought down. 
that we have overshot the time but give me five minutes I'll be done I may just generally pray for the sick uh, we may not take testimonies because of time I will just pray for the sick give an altar call and then we'll be done because of time I had wanted us to close by seven but I just want to pray for us in the next two minutes and then after I'll make an altar call is that okay can you lift your hands The prayer I want to pray is the deliverance prayer. And if there are people connected to the families or the regions where darkness has, has held sway, as I pray this prayer, there will be manifestations here that the altars have been broken. Lift your hands, please. I want to challenge the spirits of witchcraft from the territories where we come from, where we are represent, where we represent. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. Father, if there is anyone here present, any family here present that is from a region where witchcraft, idolatry is prevalent, if there is anyone here present that comes from a family where the chains of darkness has held men captive lord i come with the rod of a higher priesthood and in a name that is above every other name by this apostolic and prophetic grace i tear down the altars of witchcraft i tear down the altars of witchcraft i tear down the altars of idolatry and let the fire of god scatter the works of darkness over the lives of individuals over the lives of families let the altars of power be brought down 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 that's it i come against the spirit of demonic patterns in families patterns of delay patterns of disgrace reproach everybody must face one level of disgrace or reproach from your family patterns that are do doesn't allow men to succeed you are good you are gifted but nobody rises in that family in the name that is above every other name i challenge those altars and i command those spirits to be displaced now i command those spirits to be displaced now I command that reproach to come to an end now. Come to an end now. Come to an end now. I'm still praying. The power of God is still moving. I'm still praying. You come from a family where almost everything and anything fights men from serving God either one manipulation here and there or the person is cut off before their time lift your hands what i'm seeing are spirits but they are like shadows that's what i'm seeing brakos kapranda la kapradika subriaka shall the prayer be taken away from the mighty and the lawful captives delivered thus said the lord even the captives of the mighty shall be delivered and the prayer of the terrible shall be taken for i will contend with him that contends with thee and i will save your children lord i command those spirits to be displaced now i command those powers to be brought down now and i declare deliverance over families Deliverance over families, deliverance over territories, deliverance over individuals. Please lift your hands. There are people with giftings that seems to be lost. Once upon a time, you used to have God move in your life mightily. You used to be on fire for the Lord. 
but the activity of the enemy the sabotage of the devil has taken away that fire or that gift lift your hands your time for restoration has come in the name of jesus as i count to seven father let literal fire fall from heaven i make demands on the fire the fire of the god of elijah the fire that brings restoration over spiritual lives over financial lives over the destinies of men and in the name of jesus whatever was stolen from you whatever was taken away from your life your work with god the gifts of the spirit your the move of god in your life i declare by the count of seven let it be restored by fire let it be restored by fire one two three four five six seven restore 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 i restore prayer lives i restore lost giftings i restore ministries i restore your work with god afresh please lift your hands i'm still praying i'm doing all this because i don't have time but there are 14 people god is showing me it is time for you to carry the anointing that is upon your family for generations it has not been taken because of the powers of witchcraft and idolatry but in the name of jesus let the hand of god find those 14 people right now by a mighty prophetic and apostolic grace step into the anointings that is meant for your family and begin to become the deliverer of your family begin to become the john the baptist the way maker of your family as i count to 14 let it fall let it fall let it fall one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen touch take that grace now take that anointing now take that anointing now i release the sound of the heavens sound of creation the glory is here i release the sound of the spirit sound to creation the glory is here yahweh yahweh yeah. your hands i want to pray for the sick now ah, please because of time this is the last prayer there will be no time to take testimonies you can do that next week in our meetings but while your hands are lifted up there are people that god will deliver before i make the general prayer for the sick and what i see coming out of them are spirits of affliction for some of them is a case of affliction continually on their life for some of them they come from families where it is prevalent as i'm talking right now the power of god is finding them and in the name of jesus i rebuke that devil of infirmity from your life from your family let it come out of your body and let you in peace just lift your hands allow god to do that work right now spirits of affliction father i pray is there anyone that is here that is sick you are jehovah rapha the healer you are the miracle walker for with you all things are possible in the name that is above every other name we stand to rebuke the spirit of infirmity we rebuke the spirit of affliction i command sickle cell to be changed to aa now i just heard that it's for somebody i just heard it your genotype is changing now 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 under this anointing now by the power of yeshua 
in the name of Jesus we come against every blood condition every kind of blood confusion condition I rebuke that devil right now and I declare that their blood systems are healed and purified I declare healing to their bloodstreams every virus lets your body go now in the name of Jesus I come against terminal conditions we are handling the bigger cases first every form of terminal condition hypertension high blood pressure kidney disease all forms of terminal diseases be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now in the name of Jesus and father every kind of ailment that is here present right now we declare that your children are healed we declare that your children are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus thank you father 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 can you wave your hands and just give him praise tonight My brain is being healed. I just heard that. My brain is being healed. My brain is being healed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Very quickly, while we are standing, let's do this and we'll close. If you are here and you need to say yes to Jesus, there is no pretending about it. You may come to church, dance in church, call Jesus' name, but you are not a child of the kingdom. No movement everywhere. All standing, please. All standing, please. Let's do this and we are done tonight. You want to say yes to Jesus? I'm going to count 15. I want you to run wherever you are and make your way to the front. It's time for you to become serious with God. It's time for you to stay away from wrong association. It's time for you to let go of the things that has plagued your life and robbed you from God. And say yes to Jesus. Wherever you are, you want to say yes to God and dedicate your life afresh. I'm going to count to 15. I want you to come forward very quickly. You are giving your heart to the Lord afresh or you are rededicating your life. You want to say no to addiction or anything. Let's have you this moment at the front very quickly as I count to 15. One, two, and as they come, please clap for them. I want you to win the argument in your mind. There's no need to be ashamed. It's a matter of destiny. Is a matter of life and death. Say yes to Jesus and no to the world. Say yes to Jesus and no to the enemy. Six, seven, eight, nine. If God is talking to you right now, join them. Ten, eleven. Keep celebrating God for them. Twelve, thirteen. 14 overcome that feeling of shame and guilt and run like there's fire on the mountain 14 15 can we stretch our hands towards them and just pray for them those of you in front whether you are giving your heart to the Lord anew or you are rededicating your life afresh you want to mean business with God you want to be serious with God this is your opportunity I want you to just repeat these words after me and mean it from the depth of your heart mean it from the depths of your heart say Lord Jesus I come to you today I acknowledge my sin but I acknowledge that you died and rose again so that I will be saved I receive eternal life I receive the gift of righteousness I receive the abundance of grace and I declare that I am born again I declare that I am yours both now and forever in Jesus name father I present these ones to you and in the name of Jesus we declare that their sins are forgiven. We declare that eternal life is imparted in their spirits. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
we declare that from today they receive the abundance of righteousness and the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness we declare that they walk in victory above sin above satan above death above hell and above the grave all the days of their lives in jesus name amen god bless you for making this noble decision your life is about to begin a journey with the lord he will equip you he will strengthen you and i would like our counselors to attend to you before you go can you just follow that lady waving her hand there just follow her and our counselors will attend to you very quickly please celebrate god for them hallelujah